So the last section, you know, most of our thing's been pretty short, followed by a lab. This is a little bit longer. And there's not a single lab that goes with this. But what you can do is, in the lab notes, there is actually a series of four labs that use the e-commerce sample, the standard Google one, that basically have you start with a shell of an e-commerce app and build it all the way up using all the techniques you learned in progressive web apps. So it's a good final lab. If you do that lab, it takes most people two or three hours. But it's worth it because it gives you the whole picture of how to put an app together. So web payment integration. Why do we want it? <coughs> so how many of you are in e-commerce? Right? About a third of the room. One of the biggest problems in e-commerce is card abandonment. People add something to the shopping cart. They might even click checkout, but they never get to pay. 95% on average of carts get abandoned. It's a terrible number, right? Only 5% make it all the way through the payment process. And there's a lot of reasons for this. Sometimes it's they don't have the credit card handy to look up right that minute. Sometimes autofill puts things in the wrong places. Sometimes it's just the network isn't up enough for them to do it. Whatever it is, you'd like to get that number, that abandonment number down, because that's free money. That's more people coming and buying product. So the idea of payment integration is to really make that much simpler and easier for everybody, and also more secure. So we're going to talk about the user experience. We'll talk about the payment request API in JavaScript, how those requests work, and then point you at how to get started. So 66% of purchases on mobile are on web. Even when you have a custom application for shopping, people still go to their web browsers. It's another argument in favor of a progressive web app. If you're doing a new e-commerce product, putting it in the App Store is probably less productive than building something really good for the web. But there are 66 fewer percent fewer conversions on mobile websites meaning people come to the site, but fewer people actually buy relative to an app. Now the reason is, is because usually it's that checkout form. It's just too tough for people to get all the way through it. <coughs> so checkout forms today, they tend to be manual. You have to fill everything in. They're kind of tedious. They're kind of a pain to fill in. They're slow. And it takes a lot of interactions to make it work. Now one way to work around this, of course, is to build good autofill. Our, the web autofill knows how to fill most of this stuff in. And it makes some pretty strong guesses, you know, good heuristics, actually, about where things live. But sometimes it needs a little help. It needs to know exactly where to put things. And so the first step to improving checkout, to dropping the number of cart loss, uh, cart, um, just drop the word, I'm sorry, to improving checkout to stop cart abandonment is to build better autofill hints into your forms. So proper autofill can increase your conversion rate 25%. That's pretty meaningful. What does the markup look like? OK, we're going to try the dreaded laser pointer and see if it goes crazy here. So autocomplete value, so new attribute, like credit card dash name, CC name, autocomplete attribute, CC dash number, so there's a standard list of these. And if you just add these to your form, now autocomplete becomes much faster and much more exact. You don't have to rely on the heuristics. You can guide it exactly where it needs to go. These are actually a standard. They're not Chrome specific. They are a web standard. If you look up what WG autofill, here's the whole list. <coughs> or you can look at web fundamentals, because we publish the same thing online. So if you're using autofill, suddenly you replace manual with a lot of automatic capabilities. It's quick and simple. Um, it's, it's still, though, kind of slow and still takes a bunch of taps. So imagine if we could get away, just get rid of the form entirely. The user says, I want to check out. The phone knows what they want to do, and it does the right thing. So that's payment request. So the payment request API. The idea is to get rid of the checkout form for users and really standardize payment collection. So if you watch the animation, what you'll see is here's a cart. 
It'll loop around in just a second. <coughs> okay, I think it went all the way through. Here we go. So check out. Up pops this window. Okay, all looks good. I hit pay. It processes. I touch my fingerprint to confirm my identity. The payment goes through to the merchant site, and there, you're done. Literally that fast. That's not edited, that's not sped up. That was an actual example of the Shopify integration. You know, how many more carts, how many more people are going to buy what's in their cart if it's that easy? So now it becomes fast, and it's one tap, plus a fingerprint or other, or other way of authenticating. So the way it works is first the site makes a call to payment request. <coughs> now I'm sorry, the gray stuff you can't really see in the corner here says initialize new payment request with payments methods, purchase details, and options. So new payment request, supported methods, Methods are the ways you have a paying. So in this case, it's Visa and MasterCard. Display items. So when you pulled up that payment window, there was a uh, subtotal and a price, sometimes a list of items. So that's what the display items are. It's basically something just to display, like a label and a price. And you can have any number of these things. It's an array. And then you finally give it a total. That's the total price. Uh, including currency code and the value. And this often doesn't count shipping. Shipping's another line underneath this that gets summed in. Now the browser automatically pops up the UI to collect payment. So in this case, we said order summary, it's a donation of $55. The payment information is already in the phone, usually because somebody's either typed in their credit card on a previous form or if we recognize a new card, we'll say, OK, how about if you take a picture of the card, we'll scan it in for you. So we've captured that payment info. Now, maybe if this is the wrong credit card, I can go ahead and tap Edit, and I can make changes to the payment type. I could change shipping locations. But most of the time, what comes up here is going to be correct. And if it's correct, you just hit Pay. So if the user hits edit, they can select which card. They can add a card. They can change shipping address or shipping options. And then they pay it. Now, the browser UI talks to whichever payment app is integrated for that payment method. It might be something local on the device, like Android Pay. It might be talking remotely to your payment gateway to figure out what it needs. But it goes ahead and sends that down and says, all right, here's what the person wants to pay. And you get back an authorization token. Um, now, in all of these cases, that authorization token basically doesn't make the final payment. It, author it sets up the open to buy. So it authorizes that much of a payment. And then you pass that token to your site. And your site then passes it back to the payment gateway and the gateway redeems that token and basically pays you the money. Standard, it's a very standard way of running a payment system. And that token is one-time use encrypted. It's the same security mechanism that they use with chip cards, that you get a one-time use token. It's, it's a nonce. Uh, you can't like, take it and reuse it, and nobody can really see what's inside of it. So the payment, yeah, what happens is the payment API has integration hooks into the different payment gateways. And there's a way for you to do the integration also on the app side, but I don't happen to know it. But when you supply those methods, you can also supply corresponding data. So you might say, I take, um, oh, I don't know, Bangalore Pay, right? And it needs a special account number. So I'd say, I take Bangalore Pay, and here's my account number. And we would go ahead and send, route the message appropriately, and get the token yeah, back. Browser sends it down to the site. So it's as secure as any other system that you've got. But the really interesting thing is, is you also are not necessarily giving out personal payment information to the end merchant. Because it's a token, right? The payment information goes to the gate payment gateway, encrypted, and the gateway returns you a token, and the merchant only sees the token. <coughs> So is it safe? 
So autofill and this. So autofill is stored um, encrypted on the disk. <coughs> it's not, websites can't actually look at the autofill data unless that data's been put into one of that site's forms. And you can only look at the things that have been put into the form. Um, the server can run that transaction without saving any account or card info. It could be a one-time guest thing. So it's a very nice, quick, streamlined, safe experience. So payment request is um, an open standard. It's cross-browser, it's cross-platform, it's open ecosystem. It's not just Chrome, it's across the industry. So it makes things really nice. It makes them automatic, simple, fast, you know, one tap. So how do we do it? So this slide describes it in text. You know, it lets you take payments different ways. There's a bunch of links to code samples at googlechrome.github.io, but let me actually show you some real code. Start with method data. I'll say Visa and Discover. I mean, this is obviously going to be locally relevant, what your list is. <coughs> the fine details, total price, display items for the summary, and an array of shipping options at the bottom. The options, each option has an ID, internally used a label for the user to see what its price is, and optionally, but you should probably do this, a selected bit. Because if you have five options, the user will select one of them. So that bit, you'll need to keep that current to say which one's current on here. In options, you can say, do I need, you know, do I need to add a shipping method? So does the user include that, or is that just automatic? Do you need their email? Do you need their phone number? So I build the payment request. I call show. Let's see. It returns a promise. So that has already pulled things up on the screen. The user goes through the whole process. <coughs> and when they're done, they either pay or they cancel. This resolves with a payment response. You process the payment response. You send it to the server and such as needed. And then when it's done, you call complete. And that's what displays the success on the screen. Of course, if anything goes wrong, the catch will get triggered. So payment response has at more than this, but these are the main fields, the method name, so how they're paying, any details needed for it, shipping address option, so all that you can read just as well as I can. Now, what happens if the user changes their shipping address? Let's say they don't like what they see. They want to do an edit. So if they do an edit, while the payment's being processed, while payment request is open, but before it's resolved, you'll get an event listener for either shipping address change or shipping option change. And your job is to update the event passed in here with new data. So get the new data, resolve it, pass it into the event. This code's a little hard to follow. Honestly, look at the payment sample that's published online. I'll give you a link for it. It works all of that out for you. <coughs> the same thing works, by the way, with shipping option change. You get an event, shipping option change. You pick the new option. You resolve the promise with that new option. So there's a bunch of resources. And there's no single lab to go with this. But like I said, e-commerce demo, there's actually four labs that are in your book that I'll go with that. Now, for Android Pay, supported methods, android.com slash pay. You just pass the URL in. There are some parameters you need to add, which are a little crazy. But this comes right from the documentation. It'll explain how to do it. And that's it. It works. OK? So that's your last lab, is doing the payment stuff. And that does it for the course. Yep. <laughs> Look at the look at the camera they said. So that's your last slide.